What's up everyone? It's me, your boy Seti, a Seti Knows Tech. And in this video, we're gonna look at Laravel and in particular Laravel Cell on the M1 MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, whichever one you have. Cause the problem is a lot of people wanna utilize Laravel and they wanna utilize Laravel Cell, which is a Docker, kind of a Docker framework that's built with Laravel so that you can kind of, you know, de develop a Laravel with Docker. But the problem is, is that technically as of right now, at the time of this recording, MySQL, there's not a MySQL image for ARM64. So a lot of people is like, well, I guess I can't use Laravel Cell. That's not necessarily true. We're going to look at all that and more in this video. But before we get into any of that, you know what time it is? Cue my intro. So before we get started, let's just take a quick look at what is Laravel. Laravel is a PHP framework um, that is used by a lot of developers to write applications in PHP. It basically gives you a strong like building blocks that you can build applications utilizing concepts like MVC and things like that so that you can build quite powerful applications with PHP. It's probably one of the more popular frameworks for PHP. Laravel Cell, on the other hand, is a um, environment that you can develop Laravel applications without having to install all the components that's needed for Laravel. The only thing that you really need is just, you know, Docker desktop on your computer. Um, it runs on basically as long as you got Docker on your computer, you can pretty much run Laravel Cell, um, but with the M1. MacBooks, MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, and things like that. Um, the MacBook, the M1 Macs are ARM 64 processors. So with that, you know, in order to utilize the images for Laravel, not for Laravel, but for Laravel Cell, I should say, all the images will need to be ARM 64. And like I said earlier in my introduction, as of the, as of the time of this recording, my sequel still have not put out an image for ARM64 natively. So a lot of people is like, well, how do I develop Laravel? If I wanted to utilize Laravel Cell, how do I utilize Laravel Cell on a MacBook, um, on a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air or you know, iMac or whatever you might have that's M1, you know, built. How do I utilize Laravel Cell? And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. And you know, like I said, basically we're gonna we're gonna kind of go through all that from start to finish. You no, know, first by just creating a Laravel application and things like that, and then kind of going through installing Cell and getting everything up and running. So the very first step that you want to do is make sure that you have Docker Desktop installed and running on your computer. And basically, um, Docker. If you run this a search on Docker Desktop, what you really want to do is make sure that you know you have the latest are you know the docker desktop installed on your machine and you know properly installed and installing it is just straightforward you just download the package open it up it install itself pretty much and once you have it installed you'll see that you have like this well with the cargo kind of on its back it should come up here on your you know in this area here no no let you know that you have docker installed another way to tell is once you have docker installed on here let me minimize this real quick if you come here and say things like Docker info, you know, you should get back some information about your Docker, you know, um, install and so forth. So that's how you know that you will have Docker on your machine. So the first step that you have to do is make sure that you have Docker desktop installed on your machine. And the way that we get Laravel cell up and running is pretty much across the board. We're going to be focusing more on the M1, you know, um, Max because you know trying to get up running on m1 max but if you run these same commands on any on any of your machines you should be um, fine to go so the first thing you want to do is by far is just make sure that you have docker install and and you know up and running and make sure and verify that it's running just by like i said going to your terminal and typing something like docker um docker info 
and you should get back the readings um the info back about your docker install and besides that you should be ready to go from that standpoint the next step that you want to make sure that you uh things that you have installed on your machine is composer now there's a there's a lot of ways you can install composer um and composer is basically sort of like a um, package manager for php so a lot of times a lot of people manage their application packages with composer composer installs composer updates and things like that but you want to definitely have composer on your machine the easiest way if you have a mac to install composer to me and i know that's subjective is to use something called homebrew so i installed so if you go out to brew.sh you'll come to this play um, to this website that's called homebrew you simply copy this command and um you know add it to your terminal and it will go ahead and you know download homebrew into your onto your mac and homebrew is just a package manager um for mac os and so forth it's probably one of the more popular um package managers for mac so like what app Git is for linux and things like that um, homebrew is just a package manager for linux where you can kind of install and manage your various packages for your mac and for mac install so things that you might develop in you can install no mongo um composer and things like that once you install but once you install homebrew and have that up and running um then you, and from your terminal you can just do something simple as brew install composer and i already have it installed so i don't need to reinstall it but if you hit enter it will actually install composer onto your machine and once you have it on your machine then you should better check if it's properly been installed and so forth if you just type in something like composer dash dash version you will see that composer is now installed so the next step that we want to do is let's go ahead and just create a a generic laravel application utilizing composer so um, on my computer i have a folder that i have called projects and through composer i can just say just to create a new laravel application i can just do with something as simple as say composer um create project and then you say laravel slash laravel if i can spell it right laravel and then i'm just gonna call it my app so composer create project laravel laravel or laravel slash laravel my app and what that's going to do is that it's going to go out there and basically create a um a folder and a project for you it's going to download all the you know boilerplate code that makes up a come um a laravel application so now if I go ahead and clear that, if I say ls, I see I got, now it created a folder called my app because I named it my app. And I can just go here and go cd my app. And now if I come here now, you can see that I have the basically the, the template, the beginner template of what is a Laravel application. Now what we want to do is we don't want to have to install MySQL and things like that to kind of get this running. We just want to better use Docker to be able to stand up this environment, this Laravel environment, so that we can develop against. So if you go out to the Laravel website, not Laravel, but the Laravel cell website, you will see, um, you can kind of read through what is Laravel, I'm not Laravel, what is Laravel cell and things like that and different installation setups and so forth and one of them that they have is called installing cell into an existing app that's the reason why i had you create a blanket app first because this method i'm using allows you to take a laravel app that you either just created or one that you've already created and allow you just to insert law um, laravel cell into it and run from that and it's quite easy to stand, to stand up the only thing we have to do really is run a few commands against the project root directory so once so we'll just first of all we'll cd into the actual app direct the app directory for the application that you're going to be you know working against and we just want to um we can just copy a few commands that they have right here in the documentation so if we come here now i'm already inside the my app directory and if i paste this in here this is that command here that i just copied over and hit sell basically what it's going to do 
it's going to make sure that everything's kind of installed and properly working, you know, properly installed, have all the dependencies and all that kind of stuff for my Laravel application. Next thing I want to do is, once again, from that prod, that Laravel um, root directory, you want to run this next command, which is a PHP artisan command. Let's paste it in there. And that will actually um, basically set up everything for Laravel cell with, you know, with this particular project. And you can choose, you know, um, what you want to, you know, what services you want to install. So, you know, MySQL, you got, you know, um, Selenium, Mailhog, and all that kind of stuff. For this demo, I'm just going to do zero. But you can add other ones as you need. And that's it. So now if I come here, you will see now I have a lot more um, stuff in here for my project, including my Docker Compose file. So now if I can, now I'm going to actually open all this up now in Visual Studio Code. So I'll just say code dot. And that's going to open up my project in Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, this is your standard Docker Compose file that you will be using to run your cell application. So the other thing, let's go back to the documentation. And the way that you bring up the, the cell application is quite easy. You just run this right here, the cell command. Now, this is the fully qualified path to the cell command so that you can run it, so that you can actually run cell from your terminal. Um, but you can also create aliases. They have documentation in here how to create an alias. So you don't have to write out this whole statement every time you want to run cell commands. Once you run these few commands here, you can just say things such as cell up, cell down, interact with the containers and things like that that we'll talk about in a few minutes. But now if I go in here to my terminal and I'm at the root of my project here, and if I simply say, you know, paste in that command, cell up, um, it's going to bring up my Laravel application within Docker containers. I'll also recommend that you push a, a dash D in there so that you can detach from the terminal once the project is up. I've already, the first time that you run this, it might take about five, you know, five to ten minutes maybe to kind of get everything running because it's going to download all the packages from GitHub and everything like that so that you can bring up um, the cell project and so forth. But I forgot one major step to make this all work. So going back to my Docker compose file, like I said, the problem with the current cell setup is that MySQL does not currently does not currently run natively inside of an ARM64 computer. So to get around that, there's a little trick you can use. Not really a trick, you just, you know, in your services, instead of using just, you know, you can you basically have to tell Docker and or Docker Compose, I should say, if I can do this correctly, what platform you want to run this from. So if you save that right here, you save this right here and put it underneath, you know, inside of MySQL service, you gotta go be in the MySQL service and under and under images, under image, which is the MySQL 8.0. Simply paste this in. You say platform Linux x86-64. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna run MySQL inside a cell, but it's going to run it in like an, in the emulation mode, you know, um, using like Rosetta and things like that. So it might not be as fast as the native MySQL, but that's not really, it shouldn't be a really problem for you if you're just doing development and you don't have a huge, huge database. But if you just got like a data, you know, you're just developing and things like that, then this should be fine um, to kind of get everything up and running for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this, make sure that file is saved inside the Docker Compose file. So we knock it under MySQL platform, Linux, you know, dash x86 underscore 64. So now we can actually run, let me go ahead and close this back out too. Now we can actually run this command here, which is the cell up command. And like I said, I usually type in dash D so that I can run it in detach mode. And when you hit that the first time, it's gonna create everything for you and boom, you're done. Like I said, the first time that this run, 
it might run a little slow and it might it's going to take some time by like five to ten minutes to get everything up and running for you but after you run it the first time it's going to run just as fast as you've seen here and once you once you have this um output saying everything has been created fine you're good to go so now that we have actually have our Laravel cell application running, we should now be able to come over to our browser and simply type in localhost. And there you go. So now you see the, the template Laravel site that's running in Laravel that we just installed. And now how running completely through Docker, utilizing the cell kind of framework for Docker and Laravel and so forth. Now, we can actually update this quite easily. Now that you have everything running, you can actually um, simply go into like um, code, for instance. So let me say code dot. By going to code, for instance, we can actually go into go into your resources views, for instance, and the welcome blade, for instance blade file for the welcome page which is this page right here so to show you just how easy it is to update the laravel code set and so forth we're going i'm going to remove this here where it says documentation laravel has a wonderful thorough documentation and you can simply through code just simply come here um right this line right here let's for instance let's say we want to remove this line for instance and we're going to say you know hello World um, say knows tech. We can save that, and if we come out, come back to the website now. Our base replaced this block right here with that with that updated text. So if we refresh this, there you go. So you can actually do all your Laravel stuff that you you know code and develop in Laravel completely in Docker, utilizing the cell framework. And you can keep your local desktop pretty much clean because everything is being ran right now through cell. Um, the cool thing also, the other cool thing about cell is, like I said, this is the the full kind of path to the cell command. And then from there, you can actually do interact with the containers, you know, bring cell up, bring cell down, um, even, you know, do all your artisan commands and so forth. So things such as, you know, once you have you know, either sell, you know, create an alias for sell or just run it through the, you know, sell that fully qualified sell command. Like, for instance, you, like, you know, usually you'll say PHP artisan, like, for instance, a command would be Q work with sell. You just say sell artisan Q work. So basically replacing PHP with the word sell. And that's how you interact with the cell application for, you know, while you're developing under cell. So, for instance, um, we can do things such as get the PHP version. So, you know, so, for instance, I can come here, for instance, and this my qualified, um, you know, um, to get to the cell command. In this case, because I haven't put an um, alias in, I just using a fully qualified name to get to cell. Then I can say things such as php dash dash version for instance and what it's actually doing is actually going into that php container that's being utilized right now and pulling that information out for instance you know things like that you can do um it's all kind of stuff all your artisan commands you can now do you know like your if i was going to run something like this i can say you know um sell you know artisan and then whatever I want to do, your artisan migrates and all that kind of stuff, all your PHP artisan commands, it would now be, you know, your cell, either cell or your fully qualified cell command, you know, then artisan and then like migrate, that kind of stuff. And because Node.js is also a part of this, you know, package of Node, um, not Nodes, but containers, you can even interact with the Node, with Node in here, for instance. So if you want to run node stuff so for instance i can say you know um my cell command and i can say node dash dash version and it will, it's going into that node container pulling back out i'm running 16.6 um, same thing for like npm so let's say you no know, i need npm something npm dash dash version 
and it'll come back with, you know, 7.20. So, you know, you can do a lot with Laravel Cell. Basically, you can do your full development of Laravel applications, utilizing the Cell framework for, you know, PHP and Laravel and so forth, running completely through Docker, utilizing Cell. So, you know, I'm really kind of, you know, this is one of those frameworks that I, I caught wind of not too long ago. And I started when I started utilizing it, I was like, wow, this is really nice. Because before I was using like valet and stuff like that to build my Laravel, you know, um, projects and so forth, things like that. And, I, and nothing wrong with that. But with Docker and so forth, this makes it a lot easier, a lot cleaner to stand up your applications and so forth. And, you know, when I'm done with it, all I have to do is go, you know, sell down and that would that would take it that would bring it down you know if i just say you know sell down that would actually take the application and you know bring it down so you know at the end of the day maybe you just want to bring it down so you're not running it and then bring it back up the next day when you're starting work again or you can say you know down dash b which will not only bring the application down but destroy the volumes that's attached to it. So you'll lose all your work at that point. So you don't want to say, you don't want to say dash V unless you're just trying, you know what, I'm going to get rid of the whole project or I no longer need it. Maybe you have it all backed up into your repo and I'm no longer on this project and I'm, I'm wanting something else. Then you might do a dash V this way. You not only get rid of the containers, but you get rid of the volumes and all that kind of stuff. And you're going to see right here, if I say dash V, um, it'll take a second. It's going to not just only bring down the, the app itself. It'll bring down the MySQL and also the, the attached volumes. And it might take a minute or two for it to actually do all that. And you see when everything is done, you see right here, it removed the app, it removed the, um, the network that it was, that was created for that particular Docker application and containers and so forth, as well as the volume. So a lot of your Docker commands kind of, you know, work hand in hand with, with cell and so forth. Um, and one last thing before we hang up our leave for this is that this is just a Docker compose file. So if you want to add more services to this, it's just a Docker compose file. You can add more services to this compose file and bring it all up. Part of your composed, you know, orchestration of containers that you want to run for this application. So let's say you have another, you know, you want to, you know, add another Mongo for whatever reason, you can add that, you know, you just configure the service here and so forth. If you don't want to use MySQL, for instance, and you want to use, you know, something else, you know, you know, anything, Postgres or something, you can do that. It's just a Mongo, it's just a Docker Compose file. And as long as you follow, you know, this is version three of the Docker Compose file, as long as you kind of follow that the, the formatting and the way that you add, you know, in, um, more services into this Docker Compose file to orchestrate your environment, you can do you can do just about anything in this environment, as well as even fire up, um, you know, using some like my like a, like a MySQL client to actually hook onto the database real quick. So to kind of show you that real quick, let's go ahead real quick and let's bring back up that environment. So I'm just gonna say. Once again, um, my cell command to say up, then space dash D because I want to detach from the terminal. Give it a few seconds and it's going to build everything back up. Done, done. So now to, make, to verify that everything's still working, I should just be able to say, you know, like local host, bam. So you see that, you know, my code is back up and running and it's even maintained the code that I've, that I've updated where it says hello world from setting those tech. All that still works and stuff. So, you know, you can download a repo and still stand up your environment. It's really easy to get, get going with this project. So now that we have that, for instance, if I go in my Docker container now, you see here, um, not my, I'm sorry, go into my EMV file. This has all your settings for your the different things that you might attach to your Laravel application, such as, you know, um, settings for your MySQL server, for instance which is right here, you know. Um, so let's say if you want to use a MySQL client, like MySQL Workbench or something like that to attach to your Docker MySQL, you can do all that now. So let's say like I use Navicat, for instance. Um, 
let's say I want to just create a new, you know, let's say um, Docker MySQL, my SQL, for instance. Um, it's going to be localhost because you know it's, it's currently on the localhost. What then? What am I doing here? Um, yes, it's on. It's localhost. It's still going to be port 3306, 3306, because you see it right here. DB port 3306, DB port 3306. The only thing is that my username is going to be cell, and you can change these if, before you bring up your Docker. Um, you say you know cell up. If you want to change these settings, you can change them. To whatever your heart content but in this case now that it's up i can say you know sale and the password is password in this case and it's just a local database so it doesn't really matter and if i hit test everything should be successful and i can I'll save it and this is navicat um for now you can see there you go and there's my laravel database so if i want to do some interactions with my database you know do some things check on things run some kind of sql queries and that kind of stuff as you're building your application you can do all that easily docker so my sql is now running as a container you know with cell and i'm able to use you know that env file to kind of get the settings for it set up a connection with whatever and i use navicat but you use like mysql workbench or something like that to gain access to your mysql database and do that kind of cool stuff like that as well so um i'm going to close this out this connection out and i'll destroy it because i'm not going to i'm not going to use it and basically in a nutshell that is how you will get up and running with um laravel sale you know um utilizing my sql so you're using basically instead of using you know the Intel version, I guess, package or some other version of MySQL that Docker Hub was supplying currently because they don't supply a ARM64 version. We're actually running it through, I guess, Rosetta and it's being, you know, interpreted and so forth through translation and so forth so that it can run still in your development stack. And this way you can then upload all this to, when you finally finish your app, upload it to something like Heroku or digital ocean or whatever you're going to deploy it to get it all stood up in a production environment and you should be good to go so it was just a video that i kind of liked um not a video that i like it's a technology that i really like laravel cell is awesome um if you're looking to do laravel development you know php laravel development and you just want to keep your your local environment pretty much clean and run everything through docker definitely look at take a look at cell and you know and what the things that cell can do for you know your laravel development so with that said i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up um definitely hit the subscribe button if you like this kind of content and hit that bell icon so you know when i submit new content to the channel and uh, until the next one as always stay geeky stay techy seti out.